And I'm sitting there day in and day out, and I'm just being with Jesus. I'm just growing in him. I'm just learning him. And I started working at this job, and I started going to this nearby gas station during lunch, and I would minister to people. I would just stand at the gas pump and pray for people or pay for their gas. And I just started sharing the love of God with people. It's, it's not hard. Just be present. It's, it's not hard. Just see people. Just know that they matter. Man, when God touched me, I realized that I matter, that people matter, and that I needed to see this in the context of family. That God came not to just simply save sinners, but to redeem and reconcile lost children. And when you go out into the world, you need to see the lens of lost brothers and sisters instead of enemies that you need to stay away from. Satan finds his identity in the absence of your sonship. When I refuse to take my personal responsibility and realize God has placed me here to destroy the works of the devil, what happens is my absence gives Satan's presence purpose. I just began to see people encounter the love of God. After three or four months of going to this one gas station and, and people having these manifestations and some people leaving crying, some people leaving laughing, and the, I didn't know that the manager had been watching me out the window the whole time. And she comes out and she walks up to me. She says, sir, what in the world are you doing? You're at my gas station every single day. You're talking with people. Some people leave crying. Some people leave laughing. Some people fall down. Like... Who are you? <laughs> you know, I've been asked that many times, like, who are you, brother? <laughs> and I said, well, I, my name is William. I'm a Christian. I said, and what you've been seeing is God touch people. And she says, what? Are you serious? I said, what do you mean by that statement? She said, I'm an atheist, and I just prayed last night, God, if you're real, reveal yourself to me. <laughs> led her to God by accident. <laughs> That's how easy it is. You just accidentally get a thousand people saved and healed. You just accidentally change the culture. But man, I wasn't even trying to do that. I was just following Jesus, you know. And she looks at me and she says, I, I have a cancerous tumor right here on the side of my hip. Will you pray for me? And so I prayed for her. Nothing happens in the moment, but she has this peace. She gave her life to Jesus. That night, she goes home, she lays down, she lays down in her bed, nothing's happened. She gets up in the morning. When she gets out of the bed, the tumor falls off on the floor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, the next day at lunchtime, when I go there, she goes berserk getting over that counter to come see me. I thought it was because I looked good. But anyway, I'm just kidding. And so she's running out. She grabs me. She says, man, the tumor fell off. Do you want to see it? I'm like, please, I don't want to, I don't want to see it. <laughs> you know, strip, you know. So you need to tell everybody about this. And that started my ministry. That, that started me just, just being a Christian, being salt and light within the world. Matthew chapter 28 is the last verse, and I want to pray for you. Matthew chapter 28, Jesus comes to the disciples. This is different language, but the same assignment in Genesis 1. Verse 16, it says this, But the eleven disciples proceeded to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had designated. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubt, doubted. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, Some authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. It's making sure you're reading your Bible. <laughs> All authority. So why do we have belief systems that says, I can't go over there and minister in this city or this region because I don't have authority to do so? There is no jurisdiction to the authority of Christ. And when you go into that city, you're not representing yourself. 
you're representing the supreme authority of Christ. So therefore, it doesn't matter what, what is there or set up there. When you walk onto the scene, C.S. Lewis says it this way. When the author steps onto the scene, the play is over. When I step onto the scene, I don't care what the demonic activity is. They're, it's, oh, they're permiss they're, it's over because now a son that represents the authority of Christ is there. Now we can do something about it. Why do you think Jesus was sending the disciples, the 70, the, the 70 out, casting out, demons and, casting out demons and healing the sick and raising the dead and getting people saved? And he says, and I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Do you realize when they were advancing the kingdom, they were breaking the overall human agreement with their power and principality, causing it to crumble? The darkness that you see in the world is, reveals the degree of human agreement with darkness. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me on heaven and on earth. And he goes on to say this. Stay at home on your couch. Some of you are going to love me. Some of you are going to hate me after today. <laughs> Eat potato chips. and He says, go therefore. <laughs> Make disciples of some nations. We can no longer continue to redefine the nature of the commission. All. He goes on to say this. Go therefore and make, all dis make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in, in them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe some, all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. What do you think the disciples are going to teach everybody else what Jesus had been teaching them? And what did Jesus teach the disciples? As you go, preach the kingdom of God, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. <laughs> this is the commission that we have. This is the responsibility that we have as a believer is to represent God, an exact representation of who he is in real life, man. I have God backing me up.